podcast party. Descent into a verse. My name is Hyland. My friends and I have been in hell for less than an hour, and we've already been ambushed by devils, had a house fall on us, and picked up a family of refugees. Right now, we need to cross Torm's Blade Bridge and hopefully find safety at High Hall Cathedral. Who is in front of your merry band? Rhea's in front and Corbin is with her. All right, so Corbin, go ahead and give me a perception check, please. All right. 18. Oh, thank goodness. Corbin, as you pass by an alleyway, you hear two people talking. Rhea goes by without noticing, but you are able to pick up on the sort of smattering of a conversation in this alleyway. What do I hear? You hear uh, a voice say, oh, come on, it'll totally be worth it. And then another voice says, um, are, are you sure? Uh, I mean, it, that's kind of a, a, a pretty steep price to pay, but I mean, if you can get it for us, then, then absolutely. Uh, um, where do I sign? I give my hand out to everybody to, to stop. And do I recognize, uh, well, I'm worried, I'm thinking about recognize the voice of the person asking for the deal. Doesn't necessarily sound familiar to you, no. All right, and I whisper to everyone. Someone in there is making a deal. You know, a bad one. I think we should help him. Come on. Okay. Yes, okay. Rhea looks at you and says, what do you mean, what's going on? There's a devil in there They're trying to coerce someone into doing something bad. Shing, she pulled out her sword. Let's go. Okay. Following? Yep. Okay. You guys run into the alleyway and screech to a halt. And uh, as you do so, you see flapping with its tiny little wings behind it, an imp who swivels in midair and sees you. Next to this imp is a halfling. This halfling has red hair and bushy eyebrows and uh, mutton chops. And he looks at you and he goes, oh, oh my goodness, uh, are they part of this too? And the imp looks at you and in common says, hey, what are you doing here? Beat it. Don't sign that. Who are you? Whatever it's offering you, it's not worth it. It's too high a price. I say to the imp, eat it. Well, I mean, uh, I, I was kind of having sick thoughts about this, uh, uh, you know, but I, I, I need the food. My family needs the food. Of course you do. And I point at the imp and I say, you, piss off, he ain't selling. It crosses its arms and says, who are you? None of your business. Get out of here. Make an intimidation check. <laughs> I am not intimidating. Can we all look really... <laughs> sure. It's like the Avengers pose, right? It's like you guys are all just yes. backing each other up, right? Exactly. <laughs> None of your beeswax, see? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 17. 17? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty intimidating. The imp sort of looks at all of you, including the kids, who are a little bit pissed and have, you know, they, they, they do the same thing, right? They cross their arms and they sort of look menacingly, although the, the younger girl is sort of a little bit afraid, you can tell right away. But then she looks up at you and then sort of crosses her arms again. And, yeah, be, beat it. <laughs> the imp looks at the all the group thing. of you and says, I smell something really awful. Do I smell celestial? And from behind you, Lulu sort of flaps up and over and says, oh, yeah, honey, that's me. Hi. I told the dead on the end. Oh, shit. Oh, I was just going to sacred flame him, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead and roll initiative. Uh, Island got a 12. Ophelia got a 15. Three. Corbin crit failed and got a three. <laughs> it happens. Imp's going to kill us. We just got in like reservoir dogs poses and then it went in slow-mo. So we're still like trying to recover. <laughs> All right. I promised you this would be quick. As you whistle and you sort of see the air ripple in front of you, Renaissance, the imp sort of sees what's coming. Its eyes get enormously wide and it disappears. Oh. That does not mean it's gone. It simply disappears. Yep. Ophelia, it is your turn. Um, 
Um, can I cast Fairy Fire in the direction in which I had seen the imp right as it disappeared? Yeah. Sure, because that will be just a dexterity save, correct? Yes. Absolutely. What is the DC? 15. Okay. You cast Fairy Fire, uh, it will encompass the Halfling as well, which is hilarious. And the only thing glowing in that space is the Halfling, <laughs> fortunately. No sign of the Imp at all. Well, he's gone. Are we going to continue with the fight? As far as you know, he is gone. If you guys want to continue, that's up to you. We don't hear him or anything? I do. I would like to. Okay. Before we leave, I just say to the Halfling, that'll wear off relatively soon. Um... Before you sign anything, do do you make sure that you read the fine print? Because I, I really, you know, just just don't sign anything. I, I I'm I'm sorry. I, I I didn't know, but I mean, I I I know we're in an awful awful place, but I, I my family and I we, we need the food. Uh, I'm sorry. I I guess I wasn't thinking. I I was just trying to. I'll give him half of my food that I have. Wait, I I'm still at, would like to try to kill this imp. I don't. I'm not. Me, me too. Okay. Okay, can we have had that conversation and that not take out like an action? Okay. Yep, no problem. Highland, you're up. Okay, well, I can do jack shit. So I'm just going to ready an action. If I see that imp, I'm going to shoot it with my bow. Perfect. Renaissance, it's your turn. Okay, uh, I pull out a silver spoon that I just looted from some unfortunate person's house, and I kind of hold it like between my eyes and wave it around in a semicircle in front of me and I cast see invisibility. Nice. Oh. What's the range on that? If I could see it normally, I could see Fantastic. it. Fantastic. So you do in fact see it. It's 40 feet up, flying up along the alleyway. I say Corbin right there, 40 feet. And I point right at it. Fantastic. It is now Corbin's turn. Oh shit. But I can't see Unfortunately it. Unfortunately not. But <laughs> if I give the general area of like, yep. you know, can I sort of help him try to see so it? So normally you would have disadvantage on a creature that you cannot see on any kind of attack. Same thing for creatures, especially if you have a specific spell that requires sight, but it depends on what Corbin wants to do here. All right. I would like, he points up where it is, right? Yeah. If I cast Moonbeam right on this thing, <laughs> but I don't want it to hit us. So is he directly above us? No. Is he pointing directly? He is not directly above you, but he is directly above the halfling, that's for sure. Oh, he's above the halfling? Yep. Shit. Okay, I'm gonna cast Moonbeam right right where he points, and I'm gonna make it above the halfling's head, so it won't be the yeah. first five feet of the, <laughs> he's only like three feet tall. So it'll be straight up a cylinder of moonlight. Burn him, Immortal. Okay. I love that spell. Con save. It fails it completely. He takes 13 points of radiant damage. Awesome. So this is unfortunate because this is the only thing that you guys can see is Ash after the moonbeam hits. I can see but it. I can, I can see it. You're the only person who <laughs> can see it just screaming. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got him. Yeah, disapparating, screaming in the air and turning into Ash before your very eyes. Does the Ash rain down on the halfling? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it floats away on the breeze. Nice, Corbin. I was afraid he was going to bring his friends if we let him get away. No, I, it was Ren. I just, you know, well, Ilmata and Ren, mostly, I just pointed, but we got him, so. Good job. And you, you, don't sign deals. What's wrong with you? Listen, my little spoon trick is actually going to keep working for an hour, so I think we make the most of it. Yeah, let, let's keep going. We're taking the halfling with us. You coming with yeah. us? Yeah, you coming to High Hole. I hear they got oh, food. Oh, High Hole. Come on. Oh, oh my, that's, that's amazing. I have to retrieve my family. They're nearby, though. Can I and my family come with you? Sure, yes, yes, Of course, yes. but let's hurry up. Okay, he runs into a nearby house. You wait about 30 seconds, and then you see a halfling woman and three halfling children, right? These they couldn't be more than a foot and a half tall, but they are clothed in halfling clothes, and they just come sprinting out into the street with looks of terror and excitement and wonder on their faces. All aboard for High Hall, right? Let's go. Right. Let's and go. Kids, you gotta be quiet. We're doing, it's like hide and seek, right? So you gotta be sneaky. Come on. Okay. This is like Caravan of Courage. I love it. It really is amazing. I guess it is, yeah. <laughs> Corbin is gonna drop the concentration on Moonbeam because it's a big thing telling everybody where we are. Absolutely. So losing it. Yeah. Okay. You move further to the west. It is at this point that you see 
from your vantage point as you turn a corner, the bridge. It's an enormous, probably 100 foot long structure. And that in and of itself would be striking enough. But you also see that the bridge itself is over an enormous ravine. It's as if half of the city is connected to the other half of the city by this stretch of land that this bridge is strong enough to connect these two portions of the entire city and that there is a ravine about 150 feet in length from where you are, but probably continuing further to the south for what could be hundreds and hundreds of feet, maybe miles, stretching from north to south all the way along the side of the city that you're on. What do you guys want to do? Do we see anything on the bridge? Are there people crossing, creatures? You can make a perception check, all of you, if you'd like. Great. Okay. Ooh, Corbin got a 25. Very nice. Curtis has got a two. Okay. <laughs> Pay attention, Ren. What? Ophelia got a 12. I'm only looking at invisible things right now. <laughs> <laughs> Island got an eight. Corbin, there is clearly, in the center of this bridge, a small group of creatures. And when I say creatures, I mean it, because you see the purplish skin, recognizable from several encounters that you've already had, of several bearded devils standing in the center of the bridge, pacing back and forth. And behind them, several of another kind of creature that you've also dealt with, spined devils that are sitting on the railings of this bridge, their wings sort of every once in a while spreading out bat-like. Damn it. Approximately how many devils in total? There are at least three spined devils and at least two bearded devils. I'm sorry, Matt. I know you said the bridge was 150 feet. The bridge itself is about 100 feet long from end to end. Okay. And how far, how wide? Um, about 50 feet wide. Okay. And how sturdy does it look? Does it have any, like, crenellations or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, it looks pretty sturdy. You see that there are massive chains that run along the sides of it. The chains look like they're made out of the same kind of material that you saw when Silvera Savikas opened the puzzle cube and the mm. contract was revealed. It looks like that same kind of dark iron material. The other thing that you notice about the bridge, other than that it is in pretty decent shape, is that the center of the bridge is glowing with this sort of strange blue light. Do we have any idea what that blue light is? Uh, I mean, lots of things could be lit in blue. I say to Rhea, is it, was it doing that, the bridge, that, that light? Was it like that before it came to Avernus? Rhea nods uh, insistently, and she says, yes, yes, yes. It's kind of a little secret, but there are wards on that bridge that prevent creatures of evil demeanor from crossing it, but they have to be activated. You know how that's done? Yes, I do. And she looks grimly at you and says, they have to be done by people of holy faith, one on each side of the bridge, meaning one side of the width and the other side of the width, in the middle of the bridge. Right. There's a half dozen devils on there, though. I can fly over. You and, uh, Island, if you could activate those. Can Island do it? I mean, I know she's got angel blood, but... Uh, she believes in Bahama. Yeah, that's a good question. Rhea. Rhea, what, what do you mean by... Okay, I'm a cleric of Ilmata, so I'm assuming I can do it, but would it be Ren or would it be Highland? Like, if you had to choose, who would you pick? Oh, uh, I'm... I've only seen priests of Torm do it, but um, I, I, I would assume that if you have any kind of a positive energy resident within you, like uh, like a priest or a cleric, that would work. I'm neither. She has angel blood, you know, um, celestial. Yeah, I, I know. I've seen it. And Ren's a paladin. Well, then Does that... I would think that you and Renaissance would be the best choices then. I do know about Torm. Torm was covered extensively at Elmata School for Friendless Boys. So, I know some of the rituals. Yeah, there's no ritual needed. It, you just have to place your hand and... I mean, when I saw it done, this was of course during the vampire incursion, but it stopped them dead in their tracks. 
vampires, huh? The good old days, yeah. Oh uh, no, not not good at all. We need to get Corvin and Ren on that bridge, and then we need to fight them off until they can activate it. Yes. I think a lot of innocent people here. Well, they need to hide. Yeah, we should hide them away somewhere until we can clear the bridge for them. Yes, is there um, a building that looks, you know, safe and sturdy enough and not infested with other devilish creatures nearby? I mean, you can look around to each building and hopefully find one. That's what we will do. I will use another divine sense just to make sure there's nothing. I will head over to a building and then I'll use divine sense to make sure there's not like fiends lurking nearby before we all send them into hide in it and they get eaten or right. sell the souls or whatever. Important. Need for that to happen. Go ahead and uh, use your divine sense. Okay, I pull out the dreidel and spin it. The good news is that the only uh, items on that dreidel that glow are the celestial item. Yep. Lulu. Definitely Lulu. And Gargs, of course. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about Gargoth. So the fiend does light up as well. I can tell the location. So that's that's Gargs mm-hmm. there. That's Lulu. Indeed. And other than that, nothing within uh, the range of that particular ability. So do we want to try to walk up and talk our way towards them or fight our way towards them? I mean, but none of us can be invisible. Well, except Ren, it, you know, is no offense, is kind of one of them. And I'm a bugbear, so they'll maybe assume I'm in league. That's true. We might be able to get close. I don't know. We could try like, um, you know, we know the, the devil's all over making all sorts of deals, yeah. right? So we could sort of try a variation on the, the good old bugbear gambit. Yeah. We could make like um, me and Corbin made a deal yeah. and that involved bringing you two in as prisoners. Yep. That's a very clever idea. It should be three though, right? With Rhea. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, except Rhea is a, a human, so humans can be on either side. She could be with us because you don't want to right. lose all her arms and armor. Yeah, I don't need to have any weapons on me. Do you think they'll see my violin as a threat? I'm hoping not, but maybe um, just pass me the rape here. She does. And Rhea, you just hang in the back and look evil and menacing. Um, okay. Wait, I gotta cover my religious symbol with something on my shield. So Corbin will take off his vestments so that he's not wearing them anymore, so he's just in his breastplate and regular clothes. And I, I just need something to put over it for now, like a piece of leather, anything. I've got vestments that I never wear, so let's just rip these and mess them up a bit, and we'll just sort of wrap this around his shield. Okay. Ophelia tells everyone a story she's, you know, Rhea says about the vampires, and she's like, yes, I remember. I remember hearing the story of how the people of El Terrell defeated the vampire infestation, and she sort of, like, tells a sort of an inspirational, rousing rendition of the story to kind of pump people up, and she gives both Corbin and Renison Spartic inspiration. Nice. Awesome. I rip some of my vestments, and I wrap them around Corbin's shield to hide the symbol. All right. I take some rope... And I very loosely tie one end of it round Ophelia's wrists, but so she could slip out, and the same for Highland. And then I give the middle section of the rope to Corbin to kind of drag them along. All right, and then Corbin's going to cut himself on the arm where it's not going to hurt too much and do too much damage. And he's going to take some blood and he's going to rub it on Rhea's faceplate mm-hmm. and on her armor to make her look scary and nasty and he'll put some on himself too. Okay, these are all wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to ask for the dice to make some input here. Who's doing the majority of the work in this particular instance? Who's good at disguises? I am. Hylan, you're in charge. This is what we want to do. Okay, I have a disguise kit. Anything I can do to make them look meaner and a little beat up, I will do. Okay, great. Guidance. So you'll have proficiency on this roll because you're using your disguise kit. Yeah but I would like you to make either performance. I know it sounds strange because you are literally just using the makeup to make other people look better, Mm -hmm. but either performance or sleight of hand check. Okay, I will use sleight of hand. All right. And you will have guidance as well. That's an 18 without guidance, so let me roll guidance. Oh, very nice. That is a 22. Hell yes, absolutely. 
So you do a stellar job of making these folks up to be rough and tumble, <laughs> scary folks, that's for sure. I knew this would come in handy. Listen, the goal here is to get close enough. Those runes, right? We gotta kill them because we gotta get all those people across as well. Right, agreed. So, yeah, they should help destroy them. Yeah, maybe. Rhea pipes up and she says, yes, yes, yes. Uh, they emit radiant energy to any fiend or, 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 or undead creature that's in contact with the bridge. If that doesn't get them all, then we just gotta finish them off. Right. right. Yes. We have to talk our way to that point. Um, Rhea, will, will this hurt Ren, the bridge? Cause he's got, you know, pot, he's half devil or pot devil. No, I, I don't believe so. Okay, just wanted to make sure. I guess we'll find out if it fries me. Well, if it hurts, then we got to get you off the bridge. So whatever, whatever has to be done. Once Corbin and I hit those runes, it's on. Right. Ilmata, I'm sorry, I didn't, I'm no, it's no offense to you. Um, forgive me. All right, I'm ready. Okay. I'm gonna look miserable and angry. Yeah, we just sort of plod unhurriedly towards the bridge. Okay. We're dragging Ophelia and Hyper. And you stowed the commoners nearby. Correct. Okay. Oh, and we leave Lulu with oh, them. Oh, you leave Lulu yeah. with them. Okay, yeah. very good. We're not gonna be able to explain her. No, definitely no. not. Fair enough. You all move towards Torm's Blade. Hi everyone, the show will be back shortly for the second half. As always, we're offering monthly free online adventures with our Dungeon Masters. These free games fill up quickly, so if you'd like to grab a spot, you should join our email list or our Discord server. Links to both can be found at cast-party.com. If you enjoy Podcast Party, please follow the show, rate us, and leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you, message us on social media, or email us at info at cast-party.com. Follow us on Facebook at Cast Party d d on Twitter at Cast Party 2 or on Instagram at Cast underscore Party. Thanks very much for listening, and now, back to our adventure in Avernus. In the center of the bridge are six figures four of these spined devils that you've encountered a couple times, and two purple-skinned, green snake-bearded devils carrying glaives. Is the symbol of Torm, is that a fist? Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah. It is, yes. It's a gauntlet. Cool. As you approach within perhaps a 70 or 80 feet, the two bearded devils swivel in place, their beards almost animate as they sort of undulate and move in an aggressive fashion as uh, these two creatures move within sight of you and then sort of stop as they see you, Renaissance, at the head of this rather ragged-looking band. We made a deal. Out of the way. I say an infernal. Okay. The bearded devil sort of approaches within maybe 60 feet, the other one a little bit further behind, and says to you, What deal? Under contract. Cut their throats. I point to Island and Ophelia. In front of the high hall. Send a message. That's what we agreed to do. Nothing in contract about discussing details with you. I'll call cool that of our way. You are under contract. Yeah, piss off. I say an infernal. <laughs> <laughs> its eyes sort of look at you because uh, you, you have no drop of infernal blood in you at all. And sort of, it narrows its eyes at you and then goes right back to Renaissance and says, With what entity did you make this contract? I point back to where we came and I say, Imp. In the ruins, in the market, it did say its name. It didn't, and I don't care. Make a deception check. I'm going to give you advantage because this conversation hasn't devolved into violence quite yet. And these creatures aren't the most intelligent. Nine. Nine. Nine oh my total. God. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it doesn't change my plan too much. The bearded devil looks at you and 
its bloodshot eyes narrow, and you see its jutting fangs, and it sort of snarls and says, You, I smell the lie on you. And then it swivels its glaive, and it calls, says, and the spine devils behind it sort of shriek and their wings splay out and they take to the skies and let's roll initiative. Oh boy, we're in for it now. Really in for it. Well, it was a good plan if it had worked. Ophelia got a 19. Highland? Uh, 11. Corbin got a 10. And Renaissance? 17. Awesome. Oh, good. Rhea got a 19. Whoa. The Bearded Devils got an 8. And the Spine Devils got a 15. All right, so we're at the top of the order. Ophelia with a 19 goes first. Go, Ophelia. Ophelia breaks her poorly tied, intentionally poorly tied ropes, and she grabs her violin from her back. She rolls her eyes back in her head and she begins muttering. She casts dissonant whispers on the devil that is closest to the group. All right. It's a DC 15 wisdom save. The bearded devil fails. Great. Okay, he's going to take eight psychic damage and he will have to run far away from me. Oh, So he has okay. to do it now. So he does it now. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever kind of awful yeah. nightmare that you put into this guy's head. He just oh, like, yeah. Zoink. Uh, no, no. And then he just uses his uh, reaction to run his speed. Great. Yeah, he runs. He runs screaming down the length of the bridge. Well, that was helpful. That's it for me. All right. Rhea is up. Rhea pulls out her sword and charges. She has to run a little further now that you've made this guy run down the length of the bridge. So she like looks at you, she taps you on the shoulder. She's like, that was good. And then she double moves. She dashes all the way down to the other devil who's about maybe 10 feet from her as she finishes her move. Renaissance, you're up. Renaissance just sets out at a dead run for the Northern Torm symbol. And I almost, but not quite reach it with a dash. All right, the spined devils, they take off from the bridge and they fly up and over to, I guess, the closest person who is an interloper. In this case, it is Renaissance. Yeah, they're all going to converge on you, uh, or at least two will anyway. Uh, so they'll sort of fly up and over and down to uh, your position, Renaissance, 40 feet towards you. So one will come on one side of you and one will come on the other side of you. The other two Spine Devils will stay in the air, and you've seen them do this before when you were down underneath the Van Thamper Manor. They have these awful spines which they flick in the air in your direction. So let's go with those guys. They attack first with their tail spines, two towards you. So that's a total of four tail spines, two on each. I just swing gogs in front of my face. Oh, God. <laughs> It'll hurt you more than it hurts me. <laughs> He's like, I'm in here. I won't be able to. Oh, okay, I felt bad. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four. Holy crap. None of them get through the shield. All right. 13, 7, 15, and 9. <laughs> yeah, no, they all just thud into gargs. <laughs> yeah. Gargoth is, is not a happy camper. But. The shield of the of the punctured lord. <laughs> yes, well done. Awesome. <laughs> the two spine devils, however, on either side of you are going to take their attacks with advantage. They have these sort of small tridents missing the third tine in the middle. They're sort of more forks than anything, to be honest. So they will bite you and try to spear you with their fork. So the first bite attack. What is your armor class? I might as well just make this easier. My armor class is 21. Awesome. Wow, you are a tank. Yes, thank goodness. Neither the bites nor the forks get through your defense. All under 21. Okay. Highland, it is your turn. Okay, I'm going to bonus action dash next to Renaissance because I can't make it to flank on this turn. And I am going to whip out the psychic blades and I'm going to stab the one to my southwest once. All right. That's an 18 to hit? Yeah, that'll hit. Roll your damage. 
That's four psychic and 16 sneak attack. Holy crap. For a total of 20. 20 damage. Woo! Okay. Yeah, that that's a big hit on these tiny little mother effers. And yeah, it, it shrieks in pain. It does not die and turn to ash, but it is certainly hit big time by that. Great. And I just say, I got your back, Tyrannosense, and I stay where I am. Pain bearer, Corbin Shiv, you're up. Corbin is going to dash right past Rhea and go all the way next to the bearded devil that is closest to her. All right. So he'll use his movement and then his action is to dash. And I don't think I'm going to do anything else. Oh no. You know what? Behind this bearded devil, a sliver of twilight is going to open up and a giant pillow is going to come out and whomp him, and I'm gonna cast Spiritual Weapon. Yes. And I critted oh, with it. Nice. Good God. So he gets whomped with 11 points of force damage. Thanks. Uh, what the? <laughs> Anything else? That's it. Okay, uh, the bearded devil, uh, who you had dissonantly whispered to, sort of skids to a stop and turns, sort of shakes its head, and then slowly turns back towards the closest foe, who is Reticence, and just says the worst possible curse in uh, Infernal. He brandishes his glaive and makes an attack with it upon you, sir. That is a 24 to hit. That will hit. Okay, that is four slashing damage. Please make a constitution saving throw. Uh. I did get a 13 on the con save. Excellent. You do not suffer a grievous bleeding wound from the glaive. Uh. Here comes the beard. Brooklyn beard incoming. Mm. That does not hit you. You are able to put your shield in the way and... I duck the beard. <laughs> <laughs> I had that one squared. Right. I know you and your beards at this point. <laughs> Telegraph every beard you make. Uh, all right, uh, the other one will attack you, Corbin, with again a glaive and a beard. Sixteen to hit from the glaive. Bounces off my shield. And the beard. Oh, that's a crit with the beard. Oh. Uh oh. oh he didn't like that beard oh. comment. What stupid beard? <laughs> it's like <laughs> your fucking pillow. And that's sixteen piercing damage. Oh, 16 beard damage. Yeah, please make a constitution saving throw. Oh, Gordon. but you gotta duck the beard. They have a tell. <laughs> he he needs of... some beard relaxer or something. <laughs> God. And I'm making a con save? Make a constitution uh, saving throw, please. All right, you got it. Oh, I got it. A seven. That is oh. a failure. You are poisoned as this awful sort of hot sauce. It feels like hot sauce running through your veins. This poison that just makes everything in your body ache and your head spin, uh. you are poisoned. While you are poisoned, obviously you have disadvantage on attack rolls, but while poisoned in this way, you also cannot regain hit points. Uh, the beard is awful. Uh. You, can re <laughs> you can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turns. All right. Okay, Ophelia, it is your turn. I'm going to cast Dissonant Whispers at level two. DC 15 wisdom save. Okay, it makes it with an 18, unfortunately. He'll still take half. Mm -hmm. How much damage would that be? Uh, that would be 15 psychic damage. So seven. Anything else, Ophelia? Uh, I will step a bit closer, I think, to the fray, just so I'm available for whatever someone might need. Sure. It is Rhea's turn. Rhea sees the opportunity that Corbin is in trouble and runs to the other side of this bearded devil and takes a couple big hits with her longsword. Hitting with both. And because Rhea's longsword is in fact silvered, she does full damage. All right. Doing 15 slashing damage. Nice. Renaissance, it's your turn. I'm a bit hemmed in. I trace my fingers over the painting of the eye on my breastplate, and I turn to the devil surrounding me, and I say, I can see you all. I'm going to Jewel the extra planer. Oh boy, I remember All this. Right. Um, Hope it works this time. Me too. <laughs> so I'm castigating unworldly beings. Uh, they're all within 30 feet of me. So every one of them has to make a wisdom saving throw, a DC 14. Oh my. This is exciting. Holy smokes, that's a lot. Ooh. That's six, six wisdom saving throws incoming. They have advantage on this. Okay, of the spined devils, only one of them fails. Okay. 
of the bearded devils, they do not fail. Both of them succeed. At least okay. one of them. You got one. Can you mark uh, the one that is affected? Absolutely. What does it mean when they're affected by this? They're turned, like turn undead. Oh, okay, cool. So the one that was affected out of all of these six was the one that was flying up in the air, swinging its tail at you and throwing its spikes into your shield. The other one is still there in the air, but this one of the two is affected. Okay, so that one must spend its turns trying to move as far away from me as it can. Can't willingly end its turn in a space within 30 feet of me. Can only use the dash action or try to escape. If there's nowhere to go, it can take the dodge action. That is in effect for one minute, and it gets no further saving throws against it. Wow. Ooh, so it doesn't get to save. It just keeps great. moving away and away and away. It doesn't get to save ever again. After a minute, it goes away, but it does not get to repeat the save right. on its next turn or anything. Nice. It's turned. Cool. Gotcha. And then I'm going to take whatever happens to me. I, I'm going to push my way past all of the devils surrounding me to get to that symbol so they can all go ahead and make their op attacks. All right. They will indeed making their opportunity attacks. Actually, you know what? Just I'm going to see how that how that plays out. So first, I'm going to just step away from the one below me, let him make his op attack, and then we'll see if I keep going. Absolutely. That, that is a good <laughs> that's, idea. That's smart. <laughs> okay. it, it bites at you with its nasty pointed teeth, and it did have advantage, so that is a 21 to hit. That is target. Seven slashing damage. Although you'd think it'd be piercing damage for this bite, but it is not. It's slashing damage for some reason. All right. I'm going to bet that was their one hit, and these two aren't flanking. So now I step away from the other two. Okay. The second of these creatures was also bite and miss with a nat one. And you're still not out of combat range with the devil. Oh, I haven't broken engagement Correct, with the other yeah. one. Yeah. So that would be the okay, only so opportunity right attacks here. that you would actually take. Am I able to reach the symbol of Torm from my current position? Yes, you can. I reach out and lay my hand on it. Okay. I would like you to make a religion check, please. Ah, uh, seven. My god! Okay. I'm rolling terribly. You place today. your hand on the symbol of Torm and you try to recite as best you can the words as it's sort of, it's almost like the, the, the words are, are coming to you in your head as to what to say and you try to repeat them as best you can. It's kind of like a game of, uh, of mental, name of that damn thing, Simon. It's like a game of mental Simon in your head and it just does not follow. And the glyph glows for like half a second and then flickers and flickers out. Okay, just so I know mechanically, will I be able to try that again next turn, yes. or I just don't know no, it? No, you can try it again. Okay, so in that case, I stay but where I am. Reminder, you need both runes, the one at the north and the one in the south, yep, yep, in yep. order for this to work. Yep. All right. All right, that's it for me. The spined devils, the two that you've just left their space, they will move in on your position, and at advantage, they will make their attacks upon you. That one just broke engagement yeah, from Highland, I it think, did. if it's doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go for it. Okay. They see you moving towards those uh, those sigils, and they want to stop you. That's a 19 to you hit. Make your uh, damage roll, yeah. That's six psychic and six sneak attack for 12 damage. Uh, yeah, it sort of growls at it, and you stab it in the back, but it's more focused on Renaissance at this point. That is for certain. Um, and they will make their attacks upon Renaissance one with their bite, one with their sort of nasty little fork. Uh, so that's a total of four attacks. These are with advantage. The first will miss with a 14. The second one is a crit. Doing a total of five piercing damage with the fork. That could have been worse. And the third and fourth do not hit. Anchorific. The other two spine devils, one just screeches and starts flapping its wings to the west. Just like it looks at you, Renaissance, and its eyes sort of glow with fear, and it just moves its entire turn and then dashes and disappears because it moves like 80 feet, which is just essentially all the way to the other side of the bridge. <laughs> and it just disappears. Like it's gone for the next minute. It probably won't even come back. Who knows? Yeah, that's like it's going to get a mile Pretty much, away. Yeah. However, the other one that's still flapping, it's just like watches the other one of its kind, like with incredulousness, <laughs> like, where the fuck are you going? And then uh, it just goes, <laughs> and then it takes two uh, spine attacks with its tail at you, Renaissance. 
That is a nat one on the first tail spine and a 23 on the second one. As the spine uh, hits you in the arm, you feel this burning sensation as you take four piercing and five fire damage. But because you are a tiefling, you are resistant. Right, that's reduced to two. Okay, so I actually take six damage. That is correct. I'm looking rough. Island, you're up. Okay. So I'm going to flank this spine devil uh, with renaissance, and I'm going to hit it twice with advantage. That's a 24 to hit on the first hit. Indeed it will. That's nine psychic and 14 sneak attack for 23 Ooh. damage. Ooh, oh, that is decimatory. Ba-boom. It goes down like a sack of potatoes. Turns to ash as it falls to pieces. Later, jerk. And then I move down 10 feet to flank the bearded devil with renaissance. Nice. That's a 21 to Indeed hit. Indeed it will. Roll your damage. That's a four psychic. Okay. That one gets him a little cut, retracting. You don't see any blood issuing forth. Uh, but this creature is definitely aware of your presence, that's for sure. Okay, great. I'm going to stay where I am. Corbin, you're up. Corbin's going to look at his pillow and say, Fluffy, kill him. <laughs> and he's going to strike out with his pillow once again. <laughs> I didn't know the pillow was named Fluffy. That makes me so happy. I just decided that right now. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. All right, the pillow swings at him and rolls a 20. That'll hit. Uh, seven force damage. All right, very nice. And then Corbin is going to shift over one square and say, Rhea, flank, flank. But he's going to reach back with his big hand. Even though I'm 10 feet away, I have big, long bugbear arms and I can reach it. Awesome. Make a religion check, please. I should be good at this. Ooh, Ooh, 17. Okay, absolutely. You stretch out your bugbear arm and you feel the words of Torm coming into your mind and you're able to immediately repeat them in the order that you are given. And as you do so, the symbol of Torm glows with a heavenly blue light. One down, one to go. I got this one. And that's my turn. Okay. We've got some beer devils here, folks, and they are not happy especially as the light of Torm glows blue and half of the runes in the center of the bridge begin to glow as well. And it looks down at the bridge glowing blue, snarls, spits in the direction of these sacred words, and then looks at you, Renaissance, and makes its attack on you. First attack with its glaive is a 19. Yes. Oh. Amazing. And, of course, the inimitable beard attack. A 10. A limbo under the beard. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right. The other bearded devil down on the south side of the bridge will attack Corbin. This one is freaking out. It sort of like shields his eyes for a second against the bright blue glow of the Torm symbol, but then makes his attack on Corbin. All right. Corbin, can you please save for the poisoned condition? Corbin tries to suck it up and he rolls a natural 20 Hell for a yeah, 22. you are no longer poisoned. I spit his poison out at his feet. <laughs> <laughs> Bugbear, I can take it. Goblin blood. I don't have to worry about the poison condition. It's just disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks, so in this case, it wouldn't matter. Anyway, incoming glaive attack on you, Corbin. That's a 24 to hit. Oh, that hits. Four slashing damage. And please make a constitution saving throw. Here we go again. Another crit what's for a 22. Crit two in a row. Okay, Andy, we have to talk. Like, what's the deal here? <laughs> yes. Yeah, again, the glaive does not in, uh, incur a bleeding wound upon you. Okay, yeah, so the glaive attack clearly does only four damage to you, but here comes the beard. That is a 12 to hit. But misses, hits my breastplate. Excellent. So glad I bought that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. It is Ophelia's turn. Ophelia will once again, it's been working well so far. Um, she's going to again cast Dissonant Whispers on this guy at level two. All right. That's a DC 15 wisdom save. You rolled a 12. All right, so he will take full psychic damage. That's going to be 12 points of psychic damage, and he must immediately run away. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to take, he some, take some opportunity attacks because this is under his own volition. <laughs> Get those op attacks. I, I think I got him with a 17. Yes, you did. I think I missed him with an 11. Unfortunately, yes, you did. 
Okay, he takes 10 magical bludgeoning as I smack him with Heaven's Fall as he moves away. Amazing. As he runs away, screaming in a hoarse voice, you give him a good whack in the back of the head and you see this blackish blood issuing forth from his head. But he continues to run. <laughs> Additionally, as a bonus action, I'm going to whisper to Renaissance, remember the story of the vampires. You can do this. Actually, she doesn't whisper it. Why, why would Ooh, she whisper it? it? We're not being Hell sneaky. No. She screams yeah. it. And I give Renaissance my my very last bardic inspiration point. All right. Awesome. Beautiful things. It's Rhea's turn. Rhea will strike out at the bearded devil. But before she does that, Lankum, yes, Lankum. she listens to you. Absolutely, Corbin. And she moves a little bit to her right so that she's able to get advantage from the attack. And with advantage, she hits only once, doing five slashing damage. All right. How bad's that guy looking? It looks pretty beat up after all the damage that you've done to it. Maybe another attack or two, and it will turn to ash like its brethren. Renaissance, your turn. It's either Torm the brave, true, and the foolish, or the foolish, the true, and the brave, or the brave, the foolish, and the true. I'm going to go with that. I, <laughs> I, I try to punch the gauntlet in the right order again. Um, Religion check. That's a 22. Hell yeah. yeah. That's the way it's done. You are absolutely correct in your recitation, and as you do so, the brilliant blue of Torm's symbol lights up on the north side, and coupled with the light from the south side, the runes in the center of the bridge light up, and you hear this beautiful sort of chime as the entire bridge sort of reverberates with this power that is infused through it. And as it does so, all of the creatures of evil intent, whether they be undead or fiend, are magically infused with radiant damage. Yay. I'll tell you how much that is. That is 4d10 radiant damage. Wow. Oh. I'm going to roll it in the open to show, well, it makes, this could be up to 40 damage that you guys do to anything that's got their feet on nice. the bridge. Here we go. That is 23 radiant damage. Awesome. And that is immediate. So, the following occurs. Number one, the bearded devil between you and Rhea immediately turns to ash, as it only had seven hit points left. Nice. The spined devil to the left of you, Renaissance, as well, turns to ash. Fantastic. The one flying in the air takes no damage because it was flying. However, the bearded devil that is running and screaming its way away from you, Ophelia, you see it just coming towards you, and then all of a sudden just poof, ash. It only had 18 hit points left. Wow. And then on a stiff breeze, gone. So there's just this one spine devil left. These things love fight to the end. They don't give a crap. It is now the spine devil's turn. The one remaining spine devil in the air from a sort of a sniping position, throw two tail spines at you, Renaissance. Yeah, I throw Gargs up in front of me. It again. misses, bang, bang, right into Gargoth's shield. We're a great team, Gargs. <laughs> it's. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> right in my eye. Gargoth's like, if you see that bridge, so absolutely. Okay, I just say, this is the first bridge I've ever liked. And I throw these two uh, psychic blades at the spined devil in the sky. Beautiful. 13? Guess what, Hyland? 13 is the magic number. All right. And because he is within range of your friend Corbin, you will get sneak yeah. attack. Yeah, you're going down, buddy. That's eight psychic and six sneak attack for 14 damage. Well, you called it, didn't you? There you go. Uh, how does he die? Okay, so uh, I throw my hand up, the blade manifests, I throw it, and right as it contacts it, it there's just a puff of smoke and then both the creature and the blade disappear. Wonderful. And you are out of combat. Thanks for listening. This episode featured the Dungeon Master stylings of Matt Gordon with Tali Vieser as Renaissance, Carolyn Fox as Highland, Rachel Tamron as Ophelia, and me, Andy Canistra, as Pain Bear Corbin Shiv. This episode was edited by Carolyn Fox and Tal Aviazer. Our original theme music is by Lauren Anker and Anthony Damaso. Some sound effects in this episode are courtesy of Sirenscape. 
Remember, if you enjoy Podcast Party, please follow the show, rate us, and leave us a review. Thanks very much for listening. We'll be back in two weeks with the next episode. Matt, what what were you envisioning that the pillow was getting its doctorate in? Oh, yeah. Um, in um, sleep science. Ah. Uh, mm. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah.